Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Today I'm going to talk about another tractor company that's gone on strike, about where tractor sales and inventory are, and a little bit about the situation with our food supply, which is a little bit scary. Now let's talk first today. Another tractor company has gone out on strike, and I'm not going to talk near as much about this strike as I did about the strike last October with John Deere, and there's a reason for that. And let's talk about that first today. Workers at two factories, United Auto Workers at two factories of CNH, have gone out on strike, and that's Racine, Wisconsin, and Burlington, Iowa, and that happened on Monday of this week. Now, what is built in those two factories is not as big an impact on my average viewer as the John Deere strike last October. Uh, CNH, if you don't know, is Case New Holland, and those companies some of you may not know, rolled together back in 1999 under one umbrella. And that's the old case in International Harvester, which had merged together in the 80s, and New Holland, which is the old Ford tractor. Uh, Ford tractor owned by Ford Motor Company was divested and merged with New Holland. And then both of those companies came together in 1999 under CNH. And CNH is owned, the bulk of it, by Fiat of Italy. So Case and New Holland are all owned by Fiat. You can buy stock in it, it's traded on the New York Stock Exchange, but the bulk of the uh, stock is owned by Fiat. Now, uh, just to give you a little background about the two companies, you may say, well, I've got a Case dealer near me and a New Holland dealer near me, and the Case sells red tractors, New Holland sells blue, and they don't seem to like one another, and they're owned by the same company? Well, that's true. Those two companies have maintained separate sales organizations, in separate uh, dealer networks and they don't get along and a lot of their products are real similar or the same. So what happened with the strike? Well the two factories that went out on strike are the main Case IH plant, an old line Case IH plant in Racine, Wisconsin and a industrial plant in Burlington, Iowa. And what's manufactured at Racine, first off are parts for Case's axial flow combines some parts for their cotton pickers and some parts for their articulated tractors. And the tractors that are manufactured at Racine are the Magnum tractors that Case IH sells and also the T8 tractors that the New Holland dealers sell. Now these are big tractors over 150 horsepower. They don't impact the bulk of my viewers. So uh, th that is not going to have a big effect on the people that, that watch my channel. Now on row crop farmers, it's going to probably have a big effect on them. But if you're waiting for a boomer tractor that you've ordered and it's not come in yet, or a farm all tractor from your case dealer, uh, this strike is going to have virtually no impact on the inventory of those items. Now let's talk about the Burlington, Iowa plant is where Case makes rough terrain forklifts but also uh, backhoes. And so this, it, this could have a big impact on the industrial world. Case is a big player in the industrial world and, uh, and they uh, you know, sell a lot of industrial equipment and it's in high demand right now with building like it is. And so that could have a big impact on the Case industrial dealers. But as far as my viewers, probably not much effect. But let's talk a little bit about where we are with tractor sales and inventory. Because if you've shopped for a tractor lately, you know, or a car, you know that inventory is short and it's hard to bargain with dealers, either tractor dealers or car dealers. I've been searching for a, a car. One, two of my kids need cars and we're putting off buying them because the supply is down and it's a, a seller's market. And uh, I was actually looking for a used car and they don't, almost don't exist. And if you look at new cars, they, they bump the price up over list price for new cars and I'll be darned if I'm going to pay that price for a new car. So we're going to run our old cars till the wheels fall off and try to get by uh, till the uh, supply catches up. But the supply is catching up in the tractor world. I'm going to read you some statistics, our latest statistics on tractor sales. And this is important if you're shopping for a tractor, things are breaking up a little bit and getting a little bit better for the buyer. Uh, the latest figures on tractor sales are that tractor sales in March, and that's the latest figures we have right now, April figures are not out yet, were down for the first time since July of 2021. Tractor sales have been going up, inventory's been going down, so it's a seller's market. But 
the, the numbers are interesting. Tractor sales overall were down 21.1%. That's a big drop in tractor sales in March versus March a year ago. Now, if you dig deeper, the tractors that most of my folks that watch my channel buy were down even more. Tractors under 40 horsepower were down 25.5% in March. That's, that's a big drop. The 40 to 100 horsepower tractors that some of my viewers buy were down 14.1%. Now, the over 100 horsepower were up 7%. So there was the big tractors were up in demand. And I'll tell you what's going on in the tractor market, just so you know. And, and uh, before I get to that, the industry people that were following the, these numbers said a big part of the drop in tractor uh, sales could have been due to a drop in tractor supply. The supply of tractors was down about 10% from a year ago, but that's still a pretty big drop in tractor sales. And the people I talk to locally say demand for small tractors and mid-range tractors has been pretty soft. Uh, this spring. So the news for you, if you're shopping for a tractor, things are starting to break loose a little bit and maybe there'll be some bargains out there on down the road, not, not in the short term, but maybe long term. Well, now let's talk today about the global food situation. And this is something that really is scaring me right now. I've been around agriculture pretty much my whole life and I've always known that the Ukraine is the breadbasket for Europe. They produce a lot of wheat, a lot of corn, a lot of oil seed there. And, and Europe and a big part of that area depends on Ukraine exports for their food supply. And of course, they're in a war with Russia right now, and that's not good. In the Ukraine right now, winter wheat is growing. Wheat that was planted in the fall will grow through the winter and should be harvested later on in late spring or early summer. And they should be right now be putting corn in the ground to harvest later. And of course, they're fighting a war. A lot of farmers are fighting on the front lines. A lot of truck drivers are fighting on the front lines and that's impacting the supply of food in that part of the world and it's really scary. Uh, what we're hearing right now is a lot of the Ukraine uh, crops are not going to get in the ground and they're looking for production to be maybe 20 to 40 percent of what it normally is and that's going to be a big drop in production. And 70 percent of the Ukraine is farmland so I mean ag exports are a big part of their GDP and they have fuel shortages right now. They have a lot of stored grain, but Russia has targeted that. And there's been, it's either four or five big grain um, uh, areas where they store grain that have been bombed by the Russians and destroyed. And so what they're doing right now in the Ukraine is keeping their grain and not exporting it. They can't get it out anyway because the ports are, are, are not functional or have been taken by Russians, but they're, they're saving it to feed their own people. And that deficit in the world grain market is scary right now. Now in the U.S., we can plant a lot of grain and raise a lot of crops. And, and obviously, if that supply is out, then, then the price is going to go up. And that's why the big tractor market is actually growing right now. American farmers, I'm sure, are preparing to plant a huge crop. And South America is a big exporter of grains. And I'm sure they're planting fence row to fence row. And, and so both places are trying to make up that deficit in the Ukraine. But the problem is uh, you can raise a lot of crops in the U.S. and, and South America and Canada and all, all across that area. But if you have a drought anywhere, and a lot of our country is, is in drought situation right now, if you have dry weather, that, that takes the crop out of that market too. And you still got to get it to other parts of the world. But the scary thing right now is with Ukraine kind of out of the agriculture market for the foreseeable future, uh, can the U.S., Canada, and South America pick up the slack? And uh, that remains to be seen. But we're seeing big tractors sell more because people are, are knowing we're going to need to raise more food to feed the world. And uh, the small tractors are coming down. And that actually, the small tractors coming down in demand is, is not good news for your local dealer. But if you're shopping for a tractor, it's good news for you. So I'm anxious to see where the April figures are. Those will be out in a couple of weeks, and that'll tell us more about where the market is headed. But when you hear about the Case New Holland strike, uh, that's probably not going to affect you and me at all. 
Appreciate you watching my videos. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can do that by clicking the Mike Face icon and checking the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with unique items for sale for the tractor owner. It helps support my YouTube channel. And here's another video you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.